Good afternoon, everyone. We're um, ready to start with the last session of NordSec. Uh, we will have Hugo presenting. Um, Hugo is a malware researcher with ESET, and he will be talking about Wajam. So please join me in welcoming Hugo. So, hi everyone. So, thank you for coming to my talk, even if this, if this is the last one of the day. So, today I will present you the, the story of Wajam. So, this is a social search engine developed by a famous Montreal startup, which became a massive spread adware. So, what about me? My name is Hugo. I work at the Montreal office of ESET as a malware researcher. Um, basically, my work consists to track uh, different kinds of malicious software and analyze them, and essentially in doing reverse engineering. So here is the agenda for this presentation. First, I will present you Wajam as a company, um, as well as, as their product and the reasons behind this research. Uh, then we will go through the history of Wajam to get a bit of context. The next two sections will be about the analyze of the different versions of the, so of the software we collected, and you will see the techniques used by Wajam uh, in their software look a lot like techniques typically, typically used by malwares. And uh, finally, finally, I will give you some takeaways of this research and uh, what, what this research uh, put in, in evidence. So let's start with a, a brief presentation of Wajam, both as a company and as a software. So what is Wajam? Wajam Internet Technology is a company founded in December 2008 in Montreal by Martin Luc Archambault. This is a famous entrepreneur in Quebec. Uh, he participated at some uh, popular TV shows like The Dragon's Den. And uh, the only product of this company is a social search engine application. So basically, uh, it allows searching through the content shared by your relations and the social networks like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or even Google+, which doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. And um, here is an example of what uh, result you could expect uh, in using Wajam. So when you use an online search engine like Google, for example, uh, it will give you the content shared by your friends on social networks related to the keywords you search for. And uh, as you can see, there, there are no ads on this example, but uh, this one comes from uh, Wajam directly. Uh, this is an actual example of a Google search with Wajam, and uh, you can see the ads and the, the, the Facebook, Twitter, uh, um, contextual menu at, uh, at the top. So you can see Wajam ads. Uh, and um, maybe you, you can wonder why, why we did this research uh, as this kind of software we could be actually useful. And actually, we knew Wajam for several years, but uh, we really started to look at it when uh, Malwarebytes published an article about macOS malware intercepting encrypted traffic uh, for ad injection. And uh, Malwarebytes didn't leak it to, to Wajam, but the domain names used were the same, and the injection process uh, of ads were, was the same. So then, one or two months later, we found a Windows version of Wajam uh, based on the kernel driver to intercept traffic. And um, also, as we work in the Montreal office, this is a, a local, uh, local story for us. So we wanted to fill the gap between uh, the public reporting and the actual behavior of Wajam. So thus, we started to look deeper at the different samples, and uh, as well as the previous one, uh, from uh, from 2011. So uh, yes, of course, I love uh, studying what wears. Uh, no, absolutely not. And um, so, before looking at the technical part and the analysis of the software, let's go through the, the, the unique history of the company to, to get a, a bit of context. So Wajam history starts with a, a lot of success the company has been rewarded several times and was acclaimed by many famous magazines uh, like Forbes or different local newspapers. So this was really a success story in, in, uh, in Montreal. And uh, even with students, uh, Wajam uh, sponsors a, a famous Montreal student club, the DCI. So this is in French. Sorry for the English only speaking uh, persons. 
And, uh, but however, the success story is balanced by the important number of user complaints regarding the, the behavior of the, of the software. And as you can maybe see um, on the examples, most of, most of the users complain about the unwanted installation of Wadjam on their machines and the, the heavy display of ads, making the software almost unusable. And uh, one of the other uh, Wadjam issues is the collection of personal information. So I will present more about the, the kind of information that Wadjam collects later. But in 2016, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner um, of Canada initiated a complaint against the, against the company for breaching the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act. So basically, this is the federal privacy law uh, for private sector organizations, and uh, it sets out the, the ground rules for how businesses must handle uh, personal information in the course of commercial activity. So, as you can see on this timeline, the investigation of the OPC started in June 2016, and the final report was published in August 2017. And during the time of the investigation, Wajam transferred all his assets to a Hong Kong company called Iron Mountain Technology Limited, or IMTL. Also, one interesting thing you can found by the OPC is the prog progressive um, and silent removal of LinkedIn, Google+, and Facebook uh, of their software between 2012 and 2014. So this means that from 2014, it was only possible to see Twitter uh, results when using Wadjam. So here is the, 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 the company uh, Wadjam uh, funds these assets too. So here is a, a screenshot of their website uh, to get a bit of context. And uh, th this is the answer of Wadjam to the report of the OPC in August 2017. And basically, Wajam stated that it was no longer accountable for IMTL's practices. So, however, even the OPC had some doubts whether the two organizations, were Wajam and IMTL, were actually entirely separate entities. And if we go further uh, in the report, it says they observed that IMTL was incorporated in November 2016, while the investigation was ongoing. So, and besides, the, the director of the company specialized in the providing business relocation and corporate services to businesses wishing to establish a presence in Hong Kong. So, quite curious. And uh, a few months ago, actually, in October 2018, uh, sorry, this is in French. A local press investigation published um, and uh, analyzed the, the report of the OPC and exposed interesting elements uh, regarding the, the transfer of Wajam to, to this new company. And basically, if you look at the, the physical address of IMTL uh, on their website, it matches exactly with the one of another company called Panocean Secretarial Group. So as you can see, so we can we can wonder some uh, something. This is rather curious. And uh, if we look at the services offered by this company, we can see they specialize in offshore company incorporation. So curious again. And uh, this is uh, actually uh, from the from their website. They say that they, they display simply the, the company name in the in their reception area and the documents are transferred to the original company. So this is kind of, uh, of curious. But anyway, now we have some context. Let's move to the, the technical part. And uh, we begin with the, the common observation um, among the different versions of what jam we observed and uh, how we classified them. So this was not an easy task. Uh, we collected an important number of what jam samples and uh, so the first step was to classify them by, by versions and features. So the, the first observation was to see that Wadjam is not the only name um, used uh, in the software, but there are many others like Social to Search, Search Page, and uh, Search Awesome, for example. But hopefully, thanks to the, the metadata of the, the samples, mainly Windows execu executables, like the PDB Pass, um, 
and the product version, it was possible to, to classify them. So here is uh, some example um, of version numbers and PDB paths we, we collected over the years. And uh, as you can see, there are, there are some very explicit, like uh, Wajam proxy or DLL injection. And it's interesting to observe that from 2017, when the company was sold, the PDB path started to be random characters. And uh, actually, the most recent version uh, in 2018 and 2019 uh, are even more random and uh, seem to follow a specific pattern, so suggesting a possible uh, uh, autom automatic obfuscation. Um, also, the, the version numbering suggests there are certain versions, but actually, we have only observed the version 1, 2, 3, 9, 11, and 30. So also, the, there, is the, the, there is the PE signatures. So it was also a good way to recognize um, Wajam samples, and uh, as the executable are signed with the, the domain names of, of Wajam, and uh, maybe um, the, you, you could recognize uh, some of them because they, they use actually uh, Montreal street name for, for their domain names. And um, basically, the, the Quebec Enterprise Register was quite useful uh, to make the link between the domain names um, and Wajam as a company. So as you can see, there are many different domain names, uh, uh, such as you know, iPhone installer, install apps, and uh, many, many others uh, using uh, Montreal street name, mostly. So here are the, the different versions uh, we could identify. So we group, we regroup them by their features and code base, even if they, even if they are distributed with a different name uh, or, the, or, or a different version number. And uh, basically, we identified five different versions of WebJam. Uh, one browser extension called the Priam, uh, three different versions for Windows, and uh, one for macOS uh, distributed from 2017. So as you can see, the name of Wajam progressively disappeared, and other names like Social to Search and Search or Some uh, were, were used. So regarding the, the features, um, each version finally does the same thing, and uh, it jinks a remote JavaScript code uh, in the user's web traffic. But the difference between each version uh, resides in the technique used to perform uh, the traffic interception. So once the software is able to, to perform the, the, the interception, it downloads a list of supported websites. So the, the, the list maps uh, a domain name to uh, a specific JavaScript file. And uh, for each URL, the, the, the Wajam, will Wajam will check the, if the domain name uh, matches um, with, the, with the, any domain name in the list. And if it matches, it injects the ads and the, the tweets corresponding to the user keywords. So here is an example of Wajam list of supported websites. So there are essentially search engines, um, approximately 100. And um, the version of the list is identified by a hash, and it is updated uh, um, every 50 seconds, for, for, for example. But the, the, the most important field here is the, the supported sites. Also, as you can see, there, there is also a, a field uh, to blacklist uh, some processes. So if we look at uh, one example, it's, it looks like this. Um, so there is the, the rejects pattern to, to match the website. So here, Google, for example. And uh, the path of the remote uh, JavaScript file to, to inject. So this is the, the JavaScript file uh, uh, for Google, for example. So it injects uh, another file. And uh, this is the one responsible for the ads injection. So um, Wajam progressively collected more and more information related to its users. So either during the installation or when the software is running. And uh, basically, there are some IDs to identify a particular users. Um, a lot of logs are sent to, to Wajam servers during the installation process to ensure it is done properly. And the same with in in the uninstallation. Sorry. And uh, some information to the setup of the user, um, like the list of the software installed, uh, or the model of the machines are also sent to, to the Wajam servers. So here is an example of network capture during an installation of Wajam on a Windows machine. 
So you can see a lot of logs. Uh, um, you get some files also. <coughs> Regarding the, the distribution, um, as I said before, a browser extension was initially available from the, web, the WebJam official website till 2014. But it is essentially dis diffused by using the, the paper install uh, distribution model. Um, and uh, according to the, the OPC, the Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Canada, the, the, the report they published in, the, in 2017, they, they used more than 50 different PPI providers uh, between 2011 and 2016. So this model was criticized several times uh, for its usage of fake Adobe Flash player uh, or uh, antivirus installers to deceive the, the user, and uh, also the, the heavy presence of hardware and even malware in some installers. So for the ones who are not familiar with this model, um, it is based on the revenue sharing and commission. So basically, the kingpin uh, at the top uh, set up a paper install uh, website. It recruits uh, some affiliates, which are able to massively spread uh, the installers bundled by the kingpin, and uh, they, they are paid uh, for each success installation. So once the, the, the adware is installed on any user machine, it generates money for the adware company. And so the hardware company will pay, again, the kickpin for distributing it, its, in the, its hardware, and et cetera. So now we have seen the, the common features. Uh, let's look deeper at the techniques used by Wajam, and uh, especially the ones to perform uh, traffic interception. So as I said before, the, the first version um, was distributed as a browser extension, so it can easily inject uh, JavaScript code uh, in any web page with uh, this manifest file. So it matches uh, any, uh, any URL, uh, HTTP or HTTPS. And uh, an interesting point is that some uh, older versions contain traces of a screen capture plugin, but it seems the, the full code was never implemented. And uh, also, it was uh, the, those versions were able to uh, send the, the bookmarks of the user to, to Wajam servers. And um, uh, the browser extension was not distributed, um, is not distributed since uh, 2014. And they, they basically removed the, the link to download it uh, from their website. So here are some, some traces um, of, the, of a screen capture plugin in the code. So it comes as a, as a GLL along the, the browser extension. And um, this, is, this is one of the, the JavaScript files of Wajam uh, used in the, in the browser extension. To the, to the left, this is an old version, which uh, leaks the, the bookmarks of the user, and to the right, uh, the, the latest version. So you can see that they remove uh, this feature. So this is the, the download link before 2014, and after uh, 2014. So as they were doing ads injection, the browser installation was quickly flagged as adware by security products. So at first, we, we can try the, the, we can see the, the, that Wajam tried to, to, to ask to remove the, detec the detection. But um, this actually, the, the, this quickly changed uh, from 2014. So, at the time of the, the, the browser extension was not distributed anymore, uh, we found another version of Wajam internally called uh, WG Proxy, and uh, for Windows only. And uh, instead of using a browser extension to, uh, to intercept traffic, uh, it set up a web proxy, a third party web proxy called, uh, called Fiddler. And um, also we observe that they, they try to elevate the, the privileges uh, using the SC debug privilege token and install a root certificate to intercept uh, encrypted traffic and uh, avoid security warnings when uh, injecting uh, a JavaScript code in web page. So from what we saw, the, this version was not distributed uh, since uh, 2016. The, this one is more interesting. So in a few months after the, the proxy variant, we observed another version with different names and different features and the techniques used by this one are much more aggressive, I, I would say. So instead of using a proxy, um, 
It, uh, it injects a DLL uh, in web browsers to hook the, the functions manipulating clear, clear traffic and uh, so inject ads. So different injection techniques can be used. I will present you, uh, them to you in the next slide. And um, also in 2016, they, they, they add a mini filter driver, so basically a WorldKit, to hide uh, the software to uh, antivirus projects. And uh, finally, they added progressively some anti-analysis mechanisms like uh, strings and, uh, and the payload encryption and the checks for uh, antivirus keys in the, in the Windows registry. So this is uh, the, the simple string encryption routine uh, used, uh, used by uh, the samples of Wajam. This is only one backdoor, uh, not, not complicated at all. And um, also, they, they, they use some uh, um, encryption algorithm like AES-256 and the RC4 to, to encrypt other files. So here are the, the checks of uh, antivirus keys. So as you can see, uh, each uh, registry, registry, key, re registry key is first decrypted. And basically, if one of these keys if is found, it just sends uh, the information to the Wajam servers and does nothing with it. So here is a sum up of the architecture of, of this version. So basically, there is a main executable with which inject the, the DLL in web browsers. The DLL is responsible to hook the functions manipulating clear traffic, as I said before, like peer write, peer read, and or it can be send, receive, etc. And um, as I said before, there is a mini filter kernel driver whose purpose is to hide um, the, the main executable and the DLL to uh, other processes. So there are different DLL injection techniques that can, that can be used depending on the parameters given uh, to the main executable. So we observe three main ones. It can use the set windows hook, uh, X technique, the create remote thread, or the usage of a third party uh, blackbone memory hacking library. So once the DLL is injected, it uses this file uh, to set up the hooks. Oh, well, it can use this file, but uh, not exclusively. And it contains the addresses to, of the functions for every brother, every version of every brother listed here. So as you can see, there are hooks for uh, more than 1,000 1, different versions of Chrome. And uh, you, you can maybe observe that there are no, no hooks for Firefox because the addresses are resolved at execution time. So here is an example for Chrome with the addresses to hook. Uh, you can recognize maybe peer, write, peer read, peer write, etc. And uh, here is an example of, uh, for peer write, so um, uh, from IDA. So basically, one of the functions uh, re responsible for sending traffic. And uh, basically, the function set hook will modify the pointer to the real peer write uh, by the fake one. And uh, this is the fake peer write will. Uh, which performs the injection um, if the domain name matches with one of the supported lists, then it calls the, the real peer write. So, as I said before, uh, some versions include a mini filter driver uh, to hide the files of the software. So, basically, what, the, what this driver does is intercept IO uh, input and output operations before they reach the file systems, so it can, it can be used to monitor, accept, reject uh, the, the, those operations. And the, the most known example is maybe uh, antivirus or more generally uh, security products. And uh, so it hides, it hides uh, Wajam files to all processes except to a restricted list. So here is the architecture. So you can see the, the I.O. manager responsible to, to handle the I.O. operations. Uh, so basically, you can register a, a mini filter to the filter manager. So like an antivirus, uh, the Wajam mini filter, or it can be activity monitor, for example. And uh, so the, the I.O. operations are filtered before reaching the, the file system driver. The mini filter driver comes with a configuration file. So they, they, they use the name PCW data, uh, as you can see in the configuration. 
And uh, basically, the driver has uh, a whitelist of processes. And uh, so the, the files of WebJam are hidden to any process except the ones uh, in this list. So this is mo they are mostly uh, uh, web browsers, as you can see. So th this was for, the, for this version of WebJam. And uh, we, we, in 2016, we identified um, an, another version that goes deeper in the, in the kernel, so m very more, more persistent. And uh, its main characteristic is the usage of a net filter driver to intercept web traffic. So this version is still distributed and uh, builded uh, almost every, every day. Um, also, a lot of techniques have been added to, for the self-protection purposes, like the, the use we suggest we, we, um, we think that they use the commercial obfuscator tool. To, uh, they bypass uh, Windows Defender. And um, and they, they add signatures in for the for, for the executables with different certificates. So the NetFilter uh, driver is based on the NetFilter SDK. Uh, so this is the framework for filtering the data packets transmitted via via networks. Um, it can operate at different levels of the TCP/IP uh, network stack, um, depending of uh, of what you you want to do with it. So this is the, the global architecture of this version. So there, there is the net filter driver and the, the mini filter driver to, to hide the, the, the different files of, uh, of WebJam. And uh, it shows that WebJam is much more implemented, uh, much more uh, persistent than, uh, than before. So here is what the, the, the string encryption looks like in, the, in this version. And uh, actually, maybe it looks uh, easy like uh, like that, but uh, it's actually kind of annoying to to analyze um, because each uh, decode char version uh, de decode char function is different uh, depending on the string that uh, that is decrypted. So here, for example, it decodes uh, a function name and um, and uh, gets its, its address with the load library and get proc address, which is typically used by uh, by malware. And this is the decode char technique, so it just may perform the, an arithmetic operation to get, uh, to get the, uh, a character for the, for the function name. So this is funny because it looks a lot like uh, the, the stonic obfuscator, and um, it uses div, um, similar techniques, but we can be sure at 100%. So there are also a configuration, configuration files for the updates. So what you can see on, uh, on this configuration file, uh, they named the, the, the NetFilter driver disk, disk bus. Uh, this is still the, the name used. And uh, there, there is also a field for a defense driver. So this is basically the, the NetFilter driver. And uh, the, different, the different name are used. You can see social to search. Uh, the, the search is not completely uh, used. They, they, they use different. Uh, names and uh, slightly different uh, from the from the, um, the the usual name of of Wajam. Um, that's all for this version. And uh, as I said at the beginning uh, of this presentation, we began this research because of a macOS uh, version of Wajam found by Malwarebytes a few months ago. And, uh, but actually, this version was already distributed in 2017. And at that time, it used a Safari plugin, so the, the web browser for macOS, uh, to, intercept, uh, to intercept traffic. So they switched to a third-party Python proxy called NMITM proxy um, in 2018. And uh, from what we saw, there, there is no official distribution of this version. And we only saw it in fake macOS application cracks um, distributed through uh, the torrent file. So here is the, the info p list. Uh, so basically, this is the, the manifest file for uh, macOS application bundles and uh, of the of the application with uh, the, the Safari plugin. And you can probably see the the, the Wadjam domain, the Langelier technology. And uh, here is the the MITM Pro version uh, with the the Wadjam domain as well. And uh, so. We, it just does the, the same thing as, as, the, as the other versions. So now, now we have seen the, the techniques you use by Wadjam. What, what, 
what can we learn from this and what, can, what are the take takeaways um, of this research? So first, Wajam is still very active, uh, even if the company was sold in early 2017. Um, the, the samples are distributed uh, through paper install, so massively spread. Um, the DOPC, the Office um, Privacy Commissioner of Canada, um, estimate that there are hundreds of millions of installations over the, between 2000, uh, 2011 and 2016. Uh, they use different names, such as some, social research, search page, etc. And the self-protection and anti-detection techniques are more sophisticated, more sophisticated than ever. Also, there, there is a, a post effect uh, of the DOPC in investigation. Uh, if you go on the, the WAJAM website with a Canadian IP address or a non-Canadian IP address. And uh, the, basically, the, the evolution of the techniques used uh, showed that WAJAM uh, was more and more persistent over the years, and uh, they mainly used um, third-party tools like uh, Fiddler, Blackbone, Minhook, and MyTM Proxy, or, or even NetFilter. Um, this is actually probably because of the security mechanisms uh, added over the years to prevent the usage of these techniques that are typically used by malwares, actually. Also, we, we can observe a, a change of strategy regarding the, the detection in 2014. And be, be, before, they, they add antivirus for detection removal. And uh, from 2014, we can see they, they use more aggressive techniques, and uh, like obfuscation, like checks uh, of antivirus installed on the machine. They use random names, encrypted installers, and uh, et cetera. Uh, regarding the prevention, um, it is quite simple, because even if uh, Wajam used uh, multiple di distribution channels due to the paper install uh, um, distribution model. Uh, it's still uh, very um, visible, and uh, you still can use the installer to to uh, to disinstall uh, to uninstall Wajam, which is quite reliable. However, we we have seen some uh, silent installers. Uh, which does not ask for the we do, do not ask for the, the user agreement uh, to for the installation. So a few points for the conclusion. Um, so the Wajam story, a famous Montreal startup, uh, they progressively uh, progressively deceive their users because of the massive usage of contextual advertising. Uh, this is a company sold in some curious circumstances, but still uh, this is the context. And, uh, but the software is still more active uh, than ever. Uh, this research showed that adware and PUA are still a gray area. Uh, they use typically malicious techniques, as you, as you have seen. Uh, they are more protected than most of the malwares. This is a, a reality. And, uh, but at some point, they, they are more annoying before they only display ads. Uh, than harmful to the user that even if the if they collect a lot of information um, they can help to identify a, a particular user and uh, also to get more context some adware are remarkably close to malware uh, the example of Stantinko is one of them uh, so you should be aware of the persistence level used by uh, some adwares you, you have seen that they use some uh, techniques uh, in the, directly in the kernel. So actually, the, the, those kind of techniques could be hijacked by another malware looking for persistence uh, methods on the system. So at some point, is it really something that you want on your machine? So that's all. Thank you for your attention.